There were two wild stallions on the mountain. Only one could rule the land. The sun's mighty hoops come a thundering down. Great albino lay dead in the sand, poor boy. Great albino lay dead in the sand. Thunderhead then was the king of the mountain. Where he lived, nobody knew where. He would steal to the ranches in the valley below. Now and then to take a new lady fair, great lover. Now and then to take a new lady fair. At night, many fillies broke for freedom. At his feet, another stallion lay dead. Like a thief in the night, he would fly out of sight. Mighty clever, the valley people said, shoot that stallion. They were sure it was the great thunderhead. <laughs> Yes, sirree. Old Thunderhead was a mighty tough customer. He kept getting bolder and bolder, like the night when he struck at Beaver Greenway's place. Bright and early next morning, Beaver's granddaughter found out what had happened to their mare. And things sure started popping. this time. Lady Hanover? She was run off by some stallion. He left his hoop prints all over the place. By it is that thunderhead. Well, don't stand there. Let's go after her. It's too late. She's dead. Dead? She tried to jump that gulch in the upper pasture. I found her lying down at the bottom. Lady Hanover. The finest trotting mare a man ever had. Well, it was only last spring we bred her to Willie D. I was counting on her colt. I'm sorry, Grandpa. Well, don't you feel sorry for me. By Ginger, I'm going to tell us McLaughlin's a thing or two. You just wait. Oh. Oh. Tell me, was I very... Yes. What day is it? Tuesday. Tuesday, you... You've been that way since Sunday. I'll put the coffee on. Honest, Ducky, this is the last time. Yes, I know. Put your head down. No. no. Hey, hey, woman, what are you trying to do? Drown me? Ouch! Ouch, you're scalping me! I came here to look after you, and I'm going to, even if it hurts. No. There. Well, thanks for leaving my head on my shoulders. Wash your hands and comb your hair, and I'll have breakfast ready in a minute. All right. Never mind breakfast. I just remember I'm mad. You're not going to McLaughlin's to start a fuss. I'm not, eh? Thunderhead has stolen two of my mares, and something's got to be done about it. If Rob McLaughlin won't, I will. I'll not have you fighting with Mr. McLaughlin. It's not neighborly. Grandpa, please wait till you feel better. If I didn't feel as well as I do, I wouldn't stand here arguing with you. Now, scat. Ken doesn't forget to bring me those skillets. This one's impossible. Just look at these eggs. Yeah. Say, I wonder where that kid is. He should have been back last night. Well, it's a long pull from Los Angeles, especially dragging a trailer. I know, but that boy's got a genius for getting into trouble. If you fight with the McLaughlins, there'll be no one in 20 miles who'll talk to you. No man stallion's gonna steal my mares to get away with it. Well, Gary, Beaver, come on in. McLaughlin, I've lost another mare. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. He's Beaver. sorry, he says. This is the second mare Thunderhead has stolen from me. Wait a minute. How do you know it's Thunderhead? 
But nobody's even seen him since we turned him loose a couple of years ago, right over there. It's Thunderhead, all right. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hunt him down and I'm going to shoot him. Well, you got a perfect right to shoot him if you catch him at it. But you haven't even seen him now, have you, Beaver? Are you calling me a liar? Oh, Grandpa, please excuse him, Mr. McGlynn. No man's going to call me a liar and get away with Beaver, it. Beaver, will you be reasonable? I'll get word around to watch out for a mare stealer and the That's all I want to know. I come over here for a little action and all I get is a lot of talk. I'll handle this thing my own way. I'm sorry, Mr. McLaughlin. He doesn't really mean it. It's all right, Carrie. Don't worry about it. Carrie! Come in, Grandpa. Goodbye, Mr. McLaughlin. Bye. Come on, son. Down. Let's get out of here. Huh. Calling me a liar and sticking up for Thunderhead. Why do you have to fight with everybody? Me? If only you'd stop drinking. Stop drinking? I only take a thimbleful just to settle my nerves. If only you would, Grandpa, and start training sundown again. Then everything will be different. Tucker, darling, you took the words right out of my mouth. That's exactly what I'm going to start doing tomorrow. You watch me. Hiya, Carrie. Hello, Mr. Greenway. Pull up a minute. I got a surprise for you. You're the one who's got a surprise coming to you, young man. Hey, wait a minute. I'll see you later, Ken. No, you won't. You keep away from those McLaughlin. Do you think Thunderhead stole the mares? If he's alive, I'm afraid he did. There have been a lot of other mares stolen lately besides Beavis. Well, what are you going to do about it? Well, if we pick up his trail soon enough after a mare has been stolen, we stand a good chance of catching him. Then you'll have to shoot him. Yeah. I'm afraid that'll break Ken's heart. Kenny! Hi, Gus. How are things in the big city? Great. I got a surprise for you in the trailer. Surprises I like don't come in trailers. <laughs> Ken! Hello, Mom. Miss Gillis. Oh, thank you, sir. Hiya, Dad. Good, good. The horses come through in good shape? Yes, sir. Mr. McNally give you the money? Yes, sir. Good. And have I got a surprise for you? Yeah? What is it this time? Well, the most wonderful thing happened right after I delivered the ponies. I met a friend of yours, Whitey Eaton, and... A friend of mine? And he let me in on the most terrific deal. Whitey Eaton did? Uh-huh. Well, he's the crookedest horse dealer this side oh, of the... Oh, no. Mis You've got him mixed up with someone else. He's swell. Ooh. Take it easy, baby. He looks fine, Kenny. What have you got in that trailer? Wait till you see it. Did you let Whitey Eaton sell you a horse? Sure. And is she a beauty? Hey, let's get her out, Gus. Come on. No, just a minute, young man. Did you take the 2200 McNulty paid you for the polo ponies and give it to Whitey Eaton for some broken down piece of crow bait? Crow bait? Why, Mr. Eaton says she's a sure winner. I told you Whitey Eaton is a crook. I'm afraid I can't agree with you, Dad. Besides, I think this mare is a very sound business investment. Oh, Come yeah. on, take a look. What? What is she, Kitty? Trotter, what'd you think? Let me get this blanket off. There you are. Rob, she's beautiful. Yeah, I've seen Whitey's beautiful horses before. Come here, son. You're gonna telephone that guy and tell him I don't want this mare. And right after breakfast tomorrow morning, you're gonna start back to Los Angeles with her. I don't think so, Dad. You, you what? You said that on my next birthday, I was gonna be a partner. And if I'm going to be a partner, I'm not something to say around here. Well, you'll never be a partner pulling stunts like this. The least you can do is let him show her. All Ken knows about horses is what you taught him. Now, she's by Bolomite out of Margaret Castleton. They were both champions. You can't beat that breeding. Well, all right. Trot her out. Let's see her. Go on. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Trot. Come on. Buying a horse without even consulting me. Well, I'm sure she'll be all right, darling. Yeah, yeah, stop that. Down, girl. Oh. Uh-oh. -uh. Ken, be careful. Oh. Hey, what's the matter with you? Down, girl. I told you about Whitey's horses. Well, what's the matter, baby? Something bothering her, Dad. Yeah, listen to her. She's windbroken. That's what's the matter with her. 2,200 bucks, right up the flue. You know, boss, might be the altitude. It's 8,200 feet up here. Yeah, that's it. It's the altitude. All we have to do is let her take it easy for a while till the lungs fill out. Then she'll be fine. Yeah, maybe. Meanwhile, you better put her off, Gus. Go on. I'll take her, Gus. No, no, no. You stay here. I want to have a talk with you. I'm sorry I bought her like I did that. I guess I should have spoken to you first, If but... you're going to be a partner, Ken, you can't just use snap judgment about things. Certainly. Why, before I do anything, I always talk it over with your mother. Well, I do. Of course, darling. Why don't you think before you do these things? I did. I put myself right in your place. I knew that you'd bought her yourself if you'd have been in my place. 
No, oh, it's a use. I give up. I do too, I guess. Just won't take my judgment on anything. Hey, Ken. Yes, sir? I've changed my mind. I'm going to let you keep the bear. Oh, you are? Gee, that's... Yeah, now, wait, wait. They're under these conditions. She's going to be your responsibility, and she'll have to pay for her own keep. And once she's brought back her cost, then we'll take you into partnership, but not before. Well, that's very fair of you, Dad. Yeah. Thank you, and you too, Mom. Oh, there's one other little matter. Might as well let you have it all at once. Yes, sir? Beaver Greenway was just here. Thunderhead stole another one of his mares. Thunderhead did? Mm-hmm. Oh, but it couldn't have been Thunderhead. We don't even know he's alive. Well, if he is, Beaver's going to shoot him. And if I see him first, I'm afraid I'll have to. I got a hunch about it the moment I laid eyes on her. Oh, that's enough for today. Oh, Jewel. Jewel? Yeah, Crown Jewel. That's a nice name. I like it. She's blooming. Have you worked her hard? No, it's the altitude. It kind of got her at first, but pretty soon she'll have lung power and stamina to burn. Won't you, baby? You know, you look at a horse the way my father used to. I do? And you know what Mother used to say? Sure, if you looked at me the way you look at your prize hunter, I'd faint with delight. You must have been quite a guy, your father. Thanks. Come on, Jewel. There we are. Now, be a good girl and I'll get you some hay. You throw it down and I'll give it to her. Okay. Is that all you're going to give her? Isn't that enough? It wouldn't be for my horses. Oh, Ken! <laughs> How was that? Ken, what are you doing? <laughs> Hey, where's the ladder? Ladder? What ladder? Come on, put it back. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, you don't, eh? Hey! Get it out! Well, that's the way you want to play. Okay! I'm sorry. You are? Why? I shouldn't be roughhousing with you. You didn't hurt me. That's not what I mean. You seem different today somehow. Maybe it's because you never looked at me before, really. No, I guess I never did. Well, I better get to work. I promised Dad I'd fix the corral fence. I'll help you. Building fences is a man's job. Oh, very well. If I'm in the way, then. I'll go home. No, don't go. Glad you came. I was thinking just yesterday that you haven't been over to go riding for quite a while. I can't be coming over here all the time, you know. Why not? I have a home, too, in case anybody should be interested. You mean I should come over to see you? Are you asking me for a date? Well, I... If you are, I think Saturday evening will be the best time. We don't have a radio or anything to dance to. But from our front porch, you can almost hear the dance music from Cave Lakes. I'll bet it's beautiful. Do you like to dance? You mean we have a date? Well, sure. Saturday evening. <laughs> hey, Ken! 
Well, here we're having dinner an hour early for him. He's the one that's late. He'll be right down. And don't kid him. Remember, it's his first date. Well, I wouldn't say a word. Sorry, I'm late. That's perfectly all right, dear. Oh, pardon me. Haven't I seen that necktie someplace before? Yes, sir. It's yours. Oh, my tie. Don't you think it's just a little bit early for you to start using my things? After all, we're not partners yet. No, sir. Hey, uh, what'd you do to your chin? Oh, nothing. It's just a little... Uh... A cut? Cut? Well, how on earth did... <laughs> it couldn't possibly be a razor cut, could it? Rob. You have been using my razor, haven't you? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You see, I've got a date. A date? With Carrie Greenway, I suppose. Yes, sir. Planning to take her dancing, I suppose. Yes, sir. And after that, to Red Slade's for some supper, I suppose. Yes, sir. Well, why didn't you say so? Here's five bucks. Have a good time. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> searching for that stallion. It's just discouraging. Now, you know I don't want to drink. I hate the stuff. But somehow everything's been going wrong with me lately. But don't think I haven't been trying, though. I thought you were going to work sundown today. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll get sundown going like he's never gone before. We'll enter him in the governor's state at Lancaster. And then everything will be peaches and cream. It's always going to be peaches and cream tomorrow. There you go, discouraging me again. Honest, Ducky, I promise. First thing in the morning, I'll hook up sundown and really get going. Is it a bargain? It is, if you mean it. Sure, I mean it. You'll see, this old boy isn't finished yet. Not by a jugful. By Ginger, we're gonna win that race. I feel it in my bones. We'll get my farm back in Connecticut. I'll start driving the Grand Circuit again. And you'll have a trunk full of pretty dresses. Grandpa, please. Well, you will. Say, let me look at you. You look real swell. How come you all rigged out like that tonight? I've got a date with Ken McLaughlin. Didn't I tell you about those McLaughlins? You know, they have a trotter too. Huh? A beautiful black mare. I think they're going to get her ready for Lancaster too. First they steal my mares and now they want to try and win the governor's stake from me. And they will if you don't get busy with sundown. A fine chance they have of beating Beaver Greenway, those johnny come lately's. Now you stay away from those McLaughlins. Go down and have your supper. You heard me now. Clockwings. Stealing my horses. Buying a trotting mare, eh? Nice evening. I hear you got a trotter. Yes, sir. And she sure looks like a winner. She does, eh? Well, I think so. Is Carrie ready? She ain't going out tonight. She isn't? Why? Is she sick? Yeah. Sick of McLaughlin's. What? 
<laughs> You're kidding. I am, am I? Well, suppose you just scat. Now, wait a minute. Carrie and I have a date to go dancing. Then just dance yourself back home. Does Carrie know about this? I told you to scat. Now, when I say scat, I mean scat. So, scat. Okay. Say, Ken. Yes, sir? Don't get no idea in your head your man can beat sundown. There ain't no horse can touch him when he's going good. That's what you think. That's what I know. <laughs> Thinks he can beat sundown, eh? The young squirt. Where's Ken? I thought I heard him. Well, he... I did, didn't I? Yeah, that was him, all right. Grandpa, Now, you I warned you to stay away from the McLaughlin. How could you do such a thing? You know how much I wanted to go dancing. But when you're drinking, you're, you're just impossible. I'm ashamed of you. Kerry! Kerry! Kerry, wait. Don't be mad at me. Come back, Ducky. I didn't mean to hurt you. Well, neither did I. What goes on, anyway? Do you still want to take me to the dance? Do I? Home, Jasper. Thanks. I must look a fright. Am I all wrinkled and blown to pieces? Well, your wrinkles will come out, and I've got a comb. Come on. Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Where, oh, where is dear little Susie? Way down yonder in the pawpaw patch. Come on, boys. Let's go find her. Come on, boys. Let's go find her. Come on, boys. Let's go find her. Way down yonder in the pawpaw patch. When I was single, oh then, oh then, when I was single, oh then, when I was single, my money did jingle, and I wish I was single again, again, I wish I was single again. I married me a wife, oh then, oh then, I married me a wife, oh then, I married me a wife, she's the curse of my life, and I wish I was single again, again, I wish I was single again. My wife, she died, oh then, oh then, my wife, she died, oh then, my wife, she died, and I laughed till I cried to think I was single again, again, to think I was single again. I married me another, oh then, oh then, I married me another, oh then, I married me another, she's the devil's stepmother, and I wish I was single again, again, I wish I was single again. Carrie, you've got to have some fun sometime. Your grandfather can't just tie you down all your life. 
I know, but he'll be worried and there's no telling what he might do. He's been drinking again. Well, I guess I'd better take you home, huh? Yes. <laughs> Isn't it beautiful? Yeah, music's good, too. Oh, Ken, what am I going to do with my grandfather? He's quite a problem, all right. Oh, he doesn't mean to be. It's just that he's getting old and he's lonely. He depends upon me so much. And if I don't take good care of him and get him all straightened out, he'll never be a success again. Well, maybe you're not handling him right. How do you mean? Well, you know the old saying, you got to take the bull by the horns. You think I should put my foot down more? I would if he was my grandfather. Maybe you're right. If I go home now, he'll think he's won his point, that I'm just a child. Now you're talking. But if I don't go... Oh, come on. Just one more. You bet. She left me. My little ducky. I shouldn't have chased that boy away sundown. No, sir, I shouldn't have done it. I don't know why I do some of the things I do. Maybe I'm just naturally mean. I've never been mean to you, have I, sundown? Gone and I'm gonna get you out of this place. I'm gonna get you a nice clean barn and a paddock deep in clover. Tomorrow, first thing in the morning, I'm gonna Hook you up. We'll show him by Ginger. Yes, sir. We'll show him. Remember when we won the wall and the whole cup at Lexington? It was a great day. Ah, a great day. Look at us now. Just look what's happened to us now. But don't you worry. We'll do it again. Yes, sir, everything's gonna be just as it was. You just watch. We'll get our farm back in Connecticut. And we'll drive the Grand Circuit again. And we'll get Carrie a whole trunk full of pretty dresses. And we'll... You think I talk too much, don't you, Sundown? About. You're really going to work sundown? Of course I am. Haven't I been telling you so all along? Oh, Grandpa! Now, 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 scat. I've got work to do. Get up, sundown. <laughs> Come on, you rascal. You've been golfing long enough now.
again. Jewel, breakfast, breakfast, Jewel. You couldn't just evaporate. Uh-oh. Holy jumping Judy. Them's dual tracks, boss. These here belong to a horse that ain't been shod. Yeah, and it looks like that unshod horse jumped the fence and kidnapped Jewel. Hey, Ken, who do you think it was? Well, I, I don't know for sure. You got a pretty good idea, though, haven't you? Well, I guess it could have been Thunderhead. You bet your life it's Thunderhead. And as long as he's alive, he's going to be a menace to every ranch in this county. He can't be far off, boss. You know, a stallion won't run his mares hard if he can help it. That's right. Let's trail him, Dad. We'll catch Jewel and Thunderhead, too. The only way to catch Thunderhead is to shoot him. Look, you get the horses ready. I'm going to phone the forest ranger, see if he can spot them with his plane. It wasn't long before the ranger reported to the boss. Him and Kenny and a bunch of ranchers started to Thunderhead's hideout. It took two days and two nights of packing over country no one had ever seen before. Then, they arrived at a mesa high enough to scare a mountain goat. Some of the boys wanted to call it a day, but the boss and old beaver, they wouldn't quit. Well, sir, when they finally got to the top, they crossed to the opposite side of the mesa, keeping a little ridge between them and where they figured Thunderhead should be. Kenny's heart was in his mouth as they climbed that little ridge. He wanted to get Jewel back, but he sure didn't want him to kill Thunderhead. There they are. And isn't that Jewel? Look at that white thief. I bet I can get a bead on him from here. You want to scare him and the mares, too? Stop that, Beaver, will you? You'll get a chance at Thunderhead later, after we've rounded up the herd. Hey, Joe, take some of the boys and spook them up to the far end. We'll cut them off on the other side when they come back.
Messiah. to jump that. Me either. It's quite a jump, all right. I'm glad you got away, ain't you, Ken? Come on, let's get our mask. Hi. Hi, Jim. You don't see her, Rob, but this one's sure mine. You got something ahead? Nope. He's slicker than a mountain goat. I just won't give him our mask. He'll steal them anyway. Did you get your mare, Rob? No, I'm afraid something's happened to her. Something's happened to her? But I thought, sure, I saw her from the hill. I'm sorry, son, but she isn't here. Maybe the wolves or the cougars got her. I told you we took the wrong trail. Doggone it, won't nobody listen to me. I could have sworn you were headed this way. Why, Ginger, I believe you're trying to protect Thunderhead. When he's got a mare with him that stood me $2,200, you think I'm crazy? Yeah. It's kind of late in the day, boys, to get all head up. A little drop of kindness, we'll head back. How about your whistle, Joe? Thanks. Here, Beaver. Settle your nerves. I'm not that nervous. Get up. Well, it's no wrinkle for people.
Commander Ed. What have you done with you? Come back here. Cool. How in the world did you get in that fix? Easy. Easy, baby. This time, baby. That's it. Oh, Jewel. Oh, girl. You're safe now. But you're sure a sight. love that old rascal, don't you? Well, so do I. You just rest her a minute with Flicka. Maybe we'll take him home with us. Come on, boy. Come on. How does she look, Doctor? She'll be all right, won't she? I don't think so, Ken. As far as the leg is concerned, you've got nothing to worry about, but her lungs are so badly congested that I'm afraid there's nothing else I can do. But you can't just give up. I'm sorry, Ken. I've done my best. If she were my mayor, I'd destroy her. Destroy her? Do you want me to... No. No, we'll attend to that next. Hey, Gus. Dad, there must be something we can do. Oh, believe me, if there was, we'd try it, but there isn't. You know we would, Ken. We don't want to destroy Jewel any more than you do. You better go along with your mother, son. No, wait. You're not going to shoot her. I'm not as smart as Dr. Kimbrough, but he can be wrong. Things are bad enough as they are. Don't make them any worse. We've got to be sensible, son. Jewel's in terrible pain. We can't let her go on suffering like that. But if she were a sick person, you wouldn't give up. Let me try. I'll help her. I know I will. She's going to die anyway. I can't do her any harm. Giving up too easy, Jewel. He's right, Rob. Let him try it. Horse ain't never dead till he's dead, boss. All right, son. And I wish you luck. Thanks. I'll find a way, Jewel. No, I won't.
Congestion reducer and the distemper remedy didn't help much then. No, sir. Well, now here, you try that. Direction is right on the bottle. That'll be a dollar and a quarter. Let me know how it works out. Okay. Hello, Ken. Hello. I hear Jules very sick. This doesn't work, I guess we'll have to destroy her. I'm sorry. Well, so long. I wish we could help him. Got a vet, didn't he? Doing all they know how, you think? I suppose so. Can't do more than that. What do you have, Beaver? Oh, hi, Mark. A couple of sacks of oats. Right. She was such a beautiful mare. It's a shame. Seems to me, if I had a mare with a congested lung, well, there's a lot of old-fashioned tricks a man can play. Like what? Of course, these newfangled vets wouldn't approve, but... Well, if I had a horse with a congested lung, I'd try some aromatic oils in hot water and maybe let her breathe the fumes up through her nostrils. That might help. You think so? Might. Well, why didn't you tell Ken? He didn't ask me. Oh, Grandpa! Hey, well, come back here. Hey, Mort, better hold those oats. Looks like I won't have a car for a while. That's enough. Now the oil. Smells awful. I don't care how it smells, but it works. Hey, wait a minute, baby. Yeah, that's going to make you feel much better. Look at the time when those two kids are still out there with that mare. Carrie should be at home and he should be in bed. Oh, let them alone. Remember how you used to pick on Ken for starting something, never finishing it? All right. He's your son. I don't. She's breathing easier now. Yeah. Gee, your grandfather's a funny guy. I thought he didn't like me. And he tipped me off to this. Guess I just don't understand him. I have a hard time understanding him myself sometimes. I bet. You've been swell, Carrie. It's wonderful to have someone stick by at a time like this. You'd do the same for me, wouldn't you? Sure I would. No. It's funny, I never used to notice what you look like. Then, all of a sudden... Now, you... don't get moody. I'm not. I just wanted to say that... Ah, oh, forget it. to see Jewel up and around again. Ken had been working her some, but she seemed to be getting fatter and sassier every day. <laughs> she sure feels good, doesn't she? Yes, sir, Ken, I think she's gonna be all right. Hey, Kenny, I just heard Jake Willis on the phone. He's coming over here tomorrow. If he likes the way Jewel goes, he'll train her. He will? Oh, say that swell. It's none better.
Get up. There's something wrong in the barn. Dad. Yeah, I'm coming. <laughs> It's a beautiful mess. Look at that stool. Come on, get her out of there. Holy smoke. Did she cut herself, boss? I don't know, but she certainly wrecked this stool. Let me have a look at her. I wonder what's the matter with her now. You know what, Kenny? I think she's in love. She misses Thunderhead. Yeah, it might be Thunderhead at that. Sure it is. I'll bet that white son of a gun's are hanging around here someplace right now. As far as I can see, she's okay. Let's put her in the stall here. Now let's get some sleep. You go ahead, Dad. I think I'll stay here for a while. All right. Good night, Kenny. You ought to get some sleep, too. Good night, Gus. You better behave yourself tomorrow, young lady. Jake Willis is coming to see you, and he's the best trainer in this part of the country. You want him to take you, don't you? Sure, you do. Ain't what a man thinks, son. It's what he knows. Well, uh, what do you know? Well, I've seen worse. I think she's pretty good. Didn't say she wasn't. Well, more folks asking questions. That's what you came here for, isn't it? Well, I thought it was my company is after. You got a good square gate of trotter, Rob. Might be able to do something with her. Once I sure, right? Then you mean you're gonna take her? Well, looking over casual like I've been, I'd say she's a whale of a prospect. Bring her over to my place Saturday. You hear that, baby? He's gonna take you. Yeah, what's the matter with you? Hold her. Oh, very good. Come on, let's unhitch her. What on earth happened to her? I don't know. Something must have frightened her. Well, looks like I got a job in my hands, Ken. Well, you won't have any trouble with her, Mr. Willis. I guess Dad and I just started her wrong. Yeah, you ought to have her the breaking card. Not that thing. That comes later. Yeah, put her up, Ken. Come on, Dick. Listen, that's Thunderhead. I told you. She's trying to get to Thunderhead. We'll put her away quick. She might do. Gus, look. Yeah. Is he coming after her, all right? Yeah. No wonder two locked it up. That stallion's gonna hang around till he gets her back again. Or get shot. I can't get my rifle. Go ahead, hurry it up. <laughs> well, that brazen son of a gun. Ken, I told you to get my rifle. Keep an eye on Thunderhead. Will you come back here and do as I told you? Look at him. I could hit him with a rock. Kenny! She's come after you, Jewel. Now's our chance to catch him. Come on, baby. What are you trying to do? I'm gonna catch Thunderhead. You crazy kid, she'll get away from me. No, she won't. I can work. Now we'll lose her again. <laughs> easy, 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 easy. 
to him, Jewel. Talk to him. That's it. That's it. Oh, boy. Here she is, boy. Don't be afraid, boy. Watch yourself, son. Watch it. Look out. Jump over, Ken, you want to get killed? Goose chase for nothing, my boy. And I won't do you any good either. Coming back to the ranch with me, Thunderhead. Coming home, understand? You want to come back, don't you? Sure you do. Easy. Steady, son. You're not afraid. Thunderhead! Come back here! If you go free now, they'll shoot you. You won't have a chance. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. All right, Jewel. We'll go. you change your mind. Ah, stop that. Just take it easy now. Steady. Steady. That's it. Everything's gonna be all right. Easy, son. Easy now. Steady. That's it. That's it. Sure. Steady now. Steady now. All right, boy. Let's go home. Come on, Joel. How do you like that? Whether I like it or not, it looks like I've got that stud in the family again. Now that Thunderhead was home to stay, Jewel was as happy as a lark. But she wouldn't work a lick unless the old boy was right on the track with her. Then pretty soon she settled down and worked fine. <laughs> Just as long as she knew Thunderhead was close by. Oh, you're still sawing at her mouth. Look at it. Looks like I'll never get it. Oh, yes, you will. Just set up straight and ease off in your line. You talk to a horse with your voice and your hands. If your hands are light, you talk gentle and encouraging. When they're heavy, you're talking mean and ugly. I'll try, Jake. Yeah. You know, Jewel carries her head to the left. Oh, I'll show you how to fix that. Jake was a smart old conjurer. The sawed-off billiard cue made Jewel trot as straight as you please. And the sheepskin roll, well, that stopped her from seeing shadows and being scared. She kept improving every day. And it wasn't long before Jake figured she was ready to step out and show some real speed. Let her step around at about a 250 gate, but come the last quarter in 32. Okay. 
We got to teach her to leave the wire fast and come home the same way. Pull up to the wire. I want to see just how good that mayor is. Ken will think we're spying on him, Grandpa. That's exactly what we're doing. Pull up to the wire. Made that last quarter in 32 and two fifths. Not bad for a green trotter. Not bad. Not bad at all. Pretty good, in fact. Let's go down and congratulate the boy. How was it? Well, the mayor looked pretty good. Now you've got to learn some of the maneuvers and methods to racing. Hmm. What's that old scallywag up to? Oh, he's just curious, I guess. He's curious, all right. Didn't learn nothing, though. Nice work, boys. Nice work. How are you, Jake? The little mare looks great, son. You've done wonders with her, Ken. Oh, you mean Mr. Willis has. Well, there's plenty to do yet. You can see that, can't you, Beaver? Well, I wasn't watching very close. Yeah. Better cool her out, put her away. Okay, you want to help me, Carrie? I'd love to. Yes, sir, she hollered down to hell. That little mare of yours, son, has really got what it takes. Gosh, that's something coming from you. Of course, you can't tell what's inside her unless you get in real competition. But then it's drivers that counts as much as horses. The best horse in the world ain't worth a lick with a greenhorn behind him. Ken is not exactly a greenhorn, Grandpa. Of course he ain't. Who said he was? And it's a good thing, too. Well, yeah? Why? Greenhorns always freeze to the reins when the going gets tough. Especially when they get pocketed by three or four wise old Joes like me. Grandpa. I remember once in Lexington. There was a kid there just about your age. He was driving his first race, too. He got pocketed down by the rail. The driver in front of him pulled up unexpectedly, and that kid's horse put his foot right smack in the other fellow's sucky wheel. Gee, what happened? Had to destroy both those horses. That kid never drove another race. I think we'd better go. Yes, I guess it's time. Well, don't you worry, son. You're doing fine, just fine. See you later, Ken. Why'd you tell him all those terrible things, Grandpa? You scared him half to death. Who, me? Well, I was just trying to give the kid a few pointers. Well, sir, it was a long drive, but here we were at Lancaster, Ohio, heart of the trotting horse country. The fairgrounds was already waking up to some real activity. Those horses were pouring in from every state in the Union to compete for the Governor's Cup. How was I betting? I just planked down a week's pay on Jules' house. Thunderhead thinks we're going to race him again. I just hope Thunderhead behaves himself. I hope you stop growing and spreading out all over the sea. <laughs> uh, there's nothing like the smell of the fairgrounds in trotting season. Or a good cigar. You didn't think I'd make it, did you, Ducky? Well, I fooled you. Just like I'm going to fool everybody else. Yes, ma'am. We'll have my farm back in Connecticut. I'll follow the Grand Circuit, and you'll have Grandpa, a... you could lose, you know. There are other good horses in the race besides Sundown. Well, you can cheer for that McLaughlin boy if you want to, but just a couple of times to be polite. Ladies and gentlemen, we're now ready for the 26th running of the Governor's Stakes, 14 class trotters, a purse of $5,000 added. Best two and three. Don't forget, a smart driver's always out to win. You've got a young mare. The sooner you bring her in, the better. Don't take any chances. No, sir. Good luck. field of eight starters are now being led to the post by Miss Barbara Mettler and Miss Marcella Baker. Introducing to you the horses and their drivers. Dillola Lord, number one, Dr. Parshall up. 
Caroline C., number two, Mr. Harold Bowlby. Donald Ford is number three, Mr. Bill Evers up. Crown Jewel is number four, Mr. Kenneth McLaughlin up, a newcomer to our sport. Relax, kid. Now, just relax. He's all right, Mrs. McLaughlin. He knows what he's doing. Six, Miss Bozai, owner driven by Ed Dunwoody. Seven, Sundown, the holder of the track record of two, four, and one half. Beaver Greenway up, whom we welcome back to our sport. Number eight, Cotero, Bud Schilling. Sundown looks fine. Sure great to see old Beaver out there again. That's where he belongs, Mr. McLaughlin. On the inside, we have Mr. Dunwoody, Mr. Edwards, and Ken McLaughlin. Take them on up there, gentlemen. Well up with them. Everybody turn them now. Be careful, Dr. Parshall, look across at the rail. Let him get down to you. McLaughlin, get over a little bit farther. Come on, Greenway, get your horse up there. Wait on him on the outside here now. Careful with him, not too fast. Let this horse to you here. Let him up here. Very nice. Go! Ford on top. Ellen C. second. Down to the third. Sundown fourth. <laughs> Back lane. Don't worry, boy. She knows you're here. C. Crown Jewel. Coming up that back lane, Dillard Lord out in front by a length. It's Carolyn C. second. Crown Jewel is third. Coming around here now, still Dillard Lord. Crown Jewel is trotting very fast in the second position now. And Sundown has moved up to third. Greenway making a drive now to improve his position with Sundown. Come on, Grandpa! Grandpa! Crown Jewel, Sundown. Still below the Lord. Crown Jewel has dropped back to Come fourth. Come on, Kenny. How's the time? Let her go. Moving round now and it's still below the Lord. It's Crown Now, Jewel. Sun. Come on, girl. Now, Let's go. Crown Jewel. Here she comes, Sue. Pass it below the Lord. <laughs> That's the stuff, Kenny. Oh, Kim took the lead. It's still anybody's race. You bet it is. That back lane and now it's still Crown Jewel. Sun down his right on her. Coming through. Now Greenway makes his drive. He moves up the side of her. Here they are, racing neck and neck and side by side now. Oh, looky here. A little trouble back there. And Mr. Greenway has his wheel locked in. Get off me! Lofton. Keep your shirt on. Talking it over. Him. He's, a, he's a trickster. Here they're coming out of it now. Still crown jewel. Now some down. Who got up beside her? Nothing. Come on, Grandpa! Jewel is trotting very fast. Now she's out on top again. They're trotting like a pair. They're side by side. It's crown jewel. Come on, Kenny. Let her go. Heading down the lane now, it's still Sundown was out in the top by a lane. Now it's Crown Jewel moves out. Moving up just a little bit of padding. She's a little ahead of him now. She's about on the lane. Sundown. Crown Jewel is trotting fast and Sundown is right at her. And here they are. Oh! Crown Jewel makes a leg. Lawton takes a leg. Oh, oh, oh. Greenway is fast on the outside with Sundown. He's moving right up to her. Crown Jewel still on a break. Come on, take it again, boy. That's on to her, Down, he's trotting fast, and here he comes on the outside. He's trying to, and he's the winner. Oh, Jewel! 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 Oh, So go out and win the next heat. I'd better. We ain't worried about it. I'm with you. Hey, Ken, you know what I'd do if I were you? Well, no, what? I'd go take me a walk. It's good for the nerves. Maybe you'll hear some of the nice things people are saying about your driving. Yeah, that might do me some good. Bob, if Ken loses, uh, what about the partnership? No, uh, not until the mayor pays for herself. That was the deal. Now, if you're really back in the game to stay, Beaver, I'll put some horses in your stable. Thank you, Charlie. I'll be proud to have them. You know, I never expected to see old Sundown trotting like that. Well, Sundown's leg, but my hands and my head. Carry. Now, that McLaughlin boy has got a bear with speed to burn, but he ain't gonna win. Because <laughs> he ain't got it here, not here. Has he, Sundown, huh? Relish? No, thank you. I guess your grandpa's figuring on this seat, too. He's out to win. 
So am I. It was awful watching that heat. Oh, Ken, if only both of you could win. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of all mixed up, too. Naturally, I want Jewel to win, but I hate to think what it might do to your grandfather if he loses. He hasn't touched a drop since the night of the dance. That's just what I mean. Well, someone's got to win. And if it isn't Grandpa, I hope it's you. And good luck to both of us. Get up there, get ready. All right, gentlemen, you trailers down there past that 80 yards now. We've got to get up together this time. McLaughlin, you get your mare over there just a little quicker, please, sir. In your position. You're scoring in third position. <laughs> up a little farther. Now let's all turn easy. Be careful now. Wait with them out here in front. Wait, McLaughlin. Not too fast, McLaughlin. Not too fast with them. Let them come. Go! <laughs> Too hard. Take a breather, Ken. Take a breather. Will you? Take his mare back a little bit now to save. He'll turn her out at that point. Still, Lord, Lord, Donald Ford, and Crown Jewel is dropping back now to third. Still, Lord, Donald Ford, and Crown Jewel is second. Now, still, Still, Lord, on top. Donald Ford is second. Now, Mr. McLaughlin begins to make a drive with his mare, and Beanley makes a drive with Sundown. Still moving up that back lane, and now Crown Jewel comes to the top again. Followed by Miss Bosai moving up on the outside. Here's a new one in here. It's Miss Bosai moving up the side of Crown Jewel. We got you now, Greenhorn. She's got it in the pocket here. Now Miss Bosai going to the top. Crown Jewel is still second. Sundown is third. Oh! 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 Is it Grant? No, it's number six. Dunwoody is up now and coming out of that wreckage. What about the driver? Is he all right? He's all right. He's on his feet. He's all right. Second, still the Lord is third. Around that turn down is still Crown Jewel. Looking back to see how close Sundown is. He's right on his wheel now. Grandpa, make his move now. Watch. Place here we are. It's Crown Jewel. It's Sundown. Sundown. Crown Jewel is still on top. Sundown moving up on even terms with it. Here he comes. I told you. Come on, Ken. It's Come on, Kenny. Come on, Kenny. On top slightly. All right, now the sun down moves up the slide advantage. Come on, you can. Go on, go on. They're like a pair again, and what a race is going to be here. It's crown two, it's sun down. Now look at the nose to nose and neck to neck. And what a finish it will be. Come on, sun down. There is crown two on the inside and sun down on the outside. How's the time, Kenny? How's the time? Turn her loose. A pair again. A crown two moves way more. Come on, there he's making his move. Sundown is coming on the right here. Here they are. It's Sundown almost ready to go on her wheel again. He's about to reach this uh, crown jewel out of sight of Vangel. And here she is, crown jewel. The tried, Sundown. So did I. It's not good enough. Now, this heat'll be the tough one, so keep your eyes and your ears open. That old beaver knows a lot of tricks that you never even heard of. He'll probably use every last one of them, see? I Five ain't minutes. sure that he... He'll be ready, boss. I'd put a shadow roll on him for the next heat. But why? Well, he kind of shined the last time. Sundown doesn't need a shadow roll to win, Grandpa. And you don't need anything either. Ladies and gentlemen, in this third heat of the Governor's Stake, you're going to see some keen competition between these two heat winners. Now, Mr. Parshall, you know where to take that horse up there and turn it there around the rail and come down with the flow. McLaughlin's got to get your mare around her now. Boy's uh, not uh, obeying the rules very well. You know what to do with him. Up, Parshall, turn slow. McLaughlin right in there where he belongs. Ken's too anxious. Easy, son, easy. This is the heat that counts. Everybody be careful. 
Watch your horse at the rail, we'll try to beat him away, and let's just be easy now. Let's get these horses on the side. Everybody on the start now. Boy, oh, that's very nice. Got too fast, got too fast. Come on, look at him, you're good. He's in the saddle. Oh, 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 he's in the saddle. Is still a little large. Miss Osa on the outside is second. Donald Ford is third, and Crown Jewel is fourth. And Sundown is fifth. Mm -hmm. Right around that turn is still a little large. It's Donald Ford, and it's uh, now Miss Osa is third. Crown Jewel and Sundown. Now it's still a little large. Crown Jewel moving up to second position. On the outside is Donald Ford third, and it's Sundown fourth. It's still a little large. Down. It's still Bill Lillard, Crown Jewel, Sundown. They're all going that short route now, biding their time to make their drive. Greenway is making a putt effort to get his horse up in there in a little better position now. And it's still Bill Lillard, it's Crown Jewel. Now Greenway has his horse out on Ken McLaughlin's back. Look at Sundown. He has got him breathing right down Ken's Ball neck. And Sundown is right on his back again. Still going that short route. Everybody waiting for time to go out and make a drive. Okay. Dillo Lord still on top. Brown Jewel is still second, and Sundown is third. Come on, girl. Let's go. All right, here's McLaughlin going to make his drive. Now he's coming to Brown Jewel. She has a Dillo Lord on the rail. Good boy, Kenny. And Sundown is third. He's now second. He's now Brown Jewel. Sundown is Come third. Come on, Dillo Lord is third. Brown Jewel out now by open length. Sundown is moving on the outside very fast. Going down, now Sundown is up her wheel. It's still Crown Jewel. Come on, Clever! Come on, Clever! is a pair. It's Crown Jewel and Sundown out for themselves. Crown Jewel is going away a little bit. Sundown is still trotting very fast on the outside. Now he's up on even terms with her again. Come Kenny. It's Crown Jewel and Sundown racing as a pair. Crown Jewel pulls away a little bit now by about a half a lane. Sundown. sundown is trying very hard to improve his position here. Oh! Crown Jewel makes a break. Sundown is trotting very fast on the outside, moving up slowly. He now goes to the top. Down Jewel is still on the break. Coffin trying to very hard to get his man on the stride. On the outside and going very fast. Here he is, Sundown, the winner. He brought up the rear of that town, boy. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the winner of the third heat at the race, the governor's stake for 14 class starters. Sundown, owned and driven by Beaver Greenway. Woo! What happened to her, Ken? Well, I don't know. She just quit. Yeah. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome Beaver Greenway back to the harness game by awarding him the trophy for having won the governor's stake. Thank you, sir. Mr. Greenway, what made Crown Jewel quit? Quit? A horse like her don't quit. You won, Grandpa. You won. You won. Get out of that place. Hop on, Ducky. All right. What happened to her, Rob? Of course, I can see there's nothing wrong with her. She didn't stop going just to let me win. You drove a great race, son. Thank you, sir. It wasn't your fault she didn't win. You were just as good as Grandpa. Honest? Shh. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Well, by Ginger, I might have known it. You're a great horseman, Robert Glockton, and you too, Ken. What do you mean? Well, this is one for the book. Unless I'm very much mistaken, this young lady's going to be a mother. <laughs> a what? Stop bragging. Stop bragging. Thunderhead. Of course. Listen, he's giving you the horse laugh now. <laughs> Called by Thunderhead. That's better than winning the race. He's Thunderhead all over again. Oh, but his eyes. They're his great-grandfather's, the albino. 
He's got something to live up to. He will. He'll be the greatest of them all. You run along, Stormcloud. Top is calling. To the world there came a little stranger, white as the mountain snow. Will he live in the valley as a friend of man, or as an outlaw to the great mountain gold? Stranger, as an outlaw to the great mountain gold. 